All right, we're going to turn our attention now to looking at what are called indefinite integrals. The indefinite integral of a function is the set of all antiderivatives for that function. Now, we've had definite integrals before. We've looked at what those are. The, the definite integral, when you have some uh, boundaries on something, integral from, say, 2 to 5 of 2x dx. Now, we looked at what that meant. That meant if you had the graph of 2x like that and the area from 2 to 5 underneath there, what that represents, right? That represents that. We also learned how you could use the fundamental theorem of calculus to figure that out. And uh, analytically, where we took, whoops, we took an antiderivative. You take any antiderivative of that, say x squared, right? x squared is the simplest antiderivative you can use, and we did that, right? And we worked it out. We got 25 minus 4, 21. That's the area under that under that graph. That's the definite integral. It's definite because it's got boundaries here. It's got values that you're that you're evaluating it for. What you get is a number. All right. Now, if you think back to finding derivatives, we had the same situation here with derivatives. We could say if we had a function like y equals x, that's on x, <laughs> x squared, we could say, what's the derivative? Let's call this f of x just to keep it uh, easier to use. We could say, what's the derivative of that function? And you say it's 2x. That's, a, that's another function right? This 2x, another function. Or you could say, what's the derivative at a certain value, evaluated for a certain value? Well, it's 2 times 2, which is 4. This is a, a number or a value, right? So the difference between those two things, specific value or another function. This is the same thing here. The indefinite integral of a function is a set of functions, another function, where it's a set of functions because you have to look at this constant here. Let's look at this first example down here. Um, if you want the indefinite integral of 2x dx, it's the set of all antiderivatives of 2x. Now, x squared is an antiderivative of 2x, but it could be x squared plus 7, or x squared minus 100, or x squared plus... 132,347.5. It could be any constant there. So the way you write that is you say plus c, and c is what they call an arbitrary constant or the constant of integration. Now when you think about this, think about this as when you write this integral here, think of it as integral of something dx. The dx is part of this integral notation. Now we saw a long time ago where that where that originally came from, but as we work on these, it's easiest to think about taking the integral with respect to x of some function right there. All right, so you're taking the integral with respect to x of 2x, and it's x squared plus c. If you want to do all these other ones here, you can try. Now I I picked some of these out so that they're hopefully easy to recognize here. Integral of 3x squared, it's any antiderivative, simplest one's x cubed, plus a constant. 4x to the third, x to the fourth, plus a constant, and so on. 9x to the eighth, x to the ninth. If there's no coefficient in front, you have to think a little bit more first. If you're taking the integral of this x to the fourth here, it's going to be x to the fifth. You've got to bump that power up one. But then since there's no coefficient in front, you have to actually divide by that. You can write divided by 5 or 1 fifth. Now, if you're not sure and see why that works, just go backwards. Take the derivative of this, and you get x to the fourth. If you were taking the derivative of that, you'd say it's x to the fourth, but I've got to put the 5 in front, and I already got the 1 fifth there. So that cancels out, and you just have your x to the fourth, and a derivative of a constant is 0. All right? So you can check check your answers here but just by finding the derivative again. Okay, you try these other two right now and uh, even that one and then we'll have a look in a second here. Alright, let's have a look at these. That one 
x to the fifth is going to be x to the sixth. When you're finding the derivative, you decrease the, the power by one. When you're finding the integral, you increase the power by one. That's an antiderivative, as long as you have the one sixth. This is going to be, bump that power up one, one seventh. This one over here, it's got this other coefficient in front of it, but we can do something um, here. We can ignore this, right? Because this actually is going to be the same as seven times the integral of x to the tenth dx, which is seven times one tenth, not one tenth, seven times, this is going to be x to the eleventh, so it's going to be one eleventh plus a constant. So in simplest form, there's 7 over 11, x to the 11th plus a constant. That's what that indefinite integral is. All right, let's make a bit more room here to look at some of these other ones. Shrink that up, get it out of the way. You've seen it already. Integral of x, think about it as integral of x to the 1. So it's going to be x to the 2. But you got to divide by 2. When you're finding the derivative of something, all right, say x to the eighth. You put this in front. When you find the derivative, eight x, and you drop the power by one. All right, so you multiply by the coefficient, and you drop the power by one. When you're finding the integral, x to the eighth, you increase at one, nine, and you divide by that. All right, instead of multiplying, you divide. Now let's get back to working on these things. Forgot my constant there. Integral dx, it's like it says integral of nothing dx. Well, if there's nothing there, it's actually, you got to just pretend it's a 1. Integral of 1 dx, integral of 1 dx. Integral of 1, just that constant, is x plus a constant. Now, you might recognize this. At this point, all we can do for integrals is if we recognize it as the, um, as the derivative of something else. You're saying integral of that, you're thinking, what is it the derivative of? Now, you may recognize that 1 over 2 root x is the derivative of square root of x. If you're not sure about that, you can do a few steps along the way here, which I'll show you. You could say that this is equal to integral of 1 half x to the negative 1 half, right? Because dividing by square root is like x to the negative 1 half. And you could say that that is equal to I'm going to put the 1 half out in front. Integral of x to the negative 1 half dx. And I follow that same power rule, right? I, the opposite of finding the derivative, I bump this up 1 and divide by that. Dividing by half is like tangent by 2 there. All right, so this is going to cancel. I get x to the 1 half, which is what I had up there, square root. All right? Let's uh, get rid of that. Leave it there in case we need it again later. A couple more here to look at. 3 over root x. Well, I'm going to uh, do something tricky here. If I happen to know that 1 over 2 root x, I just know it's square root of x. I'm going to make this 3, put the 3 out in front. 1 over square root of x, except I want to have a 2 here just to do this. So I'm going to put a 2 there but I'm going to times this by 2. If I times the thing by 2 and divide the integrand by 2 there, I'm good. So this is 6 root x plus some constant. All right? You can check it by finding the derivative and see what you have. All right? Let's uh, squish that up, make some room. And last here, um, this thing. If you can write it as a power, that's the simplest thing to do. If you write this as a power, this is integral of x to the 2 thirds. So if you're doing integral of x to the 2 thirds, I'll put it down below here, you got to increase this by 1. If I bump that up by 1, I get 5 thirds, but I got to divide by that new power. Dividing by 5 thirds is like multiplying by 3 fifths, plus my constant there. All right? So that is a beginning look at indefinite integrals, right? Now, I think it's a good idea for you to try a few more here. Just make up some functions. Integral of something, dx, see what you can do, all right? That's it.